how are you guys and welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna to do something that I've never done before I'm gonna take a risk uh, and make something I have made before but I'm gonna make it the old-fashioned way uh, I found uh, a chicken casserole recipe from the uh, early 1900s it's actually recipe was from 1830 19th century you mean 19th, that's what I said, 19th century? Is it early 1900s? 19th century, yes. early 19th century, which is 1830. Yes. The only difference between the way I'm going to cook it and the way it was made in 1830 is, in 1830, they cooked it in a fireplace with cast iron pots and pans and stuff. The only difference here I'm doing is I'm making it with modern pots and pans and I'm using the stove. Uh, but basically, I'm using the ingredients that were available uh, during the early 19th century. So this is a 19th century uh, chicken casserole. And uh, I'm going off a recipe that I found. Unfortunately, the person who actually uh, made this recipe uh, did not put down the, the amount of ingredients. Like if I need a half a cup, a quarter cup. So because I am a good cook, a good chef a good baker, I kind of eyeballed it and I kind of figured what the what amount of ingredients to put in. So take a chance and hopefully it comes out correct. First thing I'm gonna do is show you what you need. So, uh, yeah, there's a little piece of chicken, roasted chicken missing here because me and James ate the other half, half of the skin. <laughs> we, we couldn't wait, it was so delicious. You need a roasted chicken. This chicken I actually purchased in the supermarket you can roast your own chicken, totally up to you, but these are like $4.99, and they, they come in handy for chicken salad, chicken sandwich, whatever, so we're going to be using this today. So this is one roasted chicken. I have uh, some chicken stock. I have some scallions. 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 I have three eggs at room temperature. I have a half a cup of water. I have some baking, I'm sorry, some flour. I have chopped mushrooms, uh, probably about a cup and a half. Cut them in thin slices, about, you know, something like that would be fine. Oh, sorry. I that? have butter. I have a little bit of uh, white wine vinegar. I have basil. I have thyme. I have cloves. I have parsley, salt, and pepper. Again, I have more flour. I also have some chopped up ham I cut in little cubes. Uh, I have some breadcrumbs for the end. I'm using panko because I kind of like the crispiness that panko gives you. And I also have a cup of cream. So basically the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to shred up our chicken. Our chicken. So uh, some people back in eight, in the, the early 19th century, when they made this recipe, some people did, they cut their chicken in cubes. The recipe calls for the chicken to be shredded. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna shred our chicken. So when you come back, we're gonna get started. So shred the chicken as much as you can, as much as you like. Again, you want it shredded. Uh, that's what that's what this recipe calls for. The recipe calls for the chicken to be shredded. Like I said, if you want to keep it in chunks and cubes, that's totally your call. Follow the recipe. I'm gonna follow. This is authentic 1830 recipe. So I'm gonna follow it to the letter. So when we come back, this should all be shredded. Okay, so my chicken is shredded. Here it is. I mean, it did give that little, that you saw that little chicken, gave me a lot. Uh, also, I've got to tell you, you're gonna need uh, some pasta also. This dish is actually called for pasta. Uh, you can use ziti, you can use rigatoni, you can use shells, you can use elbows. Spaghetti is a no. Anything long, spaghetti, anything like spaghetti is a no. So the first thing we're going to do to get started is we're going to take at least a tablespoon of butter. We're going to throw that in our pan. Okay, we're just going to, like I said, the only thing different that I'm doing as opposed to the recipe from 1830 is they would have cooked this in a cast a cast iron frying pan inside the fireplace on some kind of grill that they would put down. Only thing different I'm doing is I'm making this the modern way with modern with modern equipment. So the butter's melted. The first thing I want to do is I want to throw in the chicken. A lot of chicken. Yeah, it's a lot of chicken. That's why I say, you know, if you don't want to cook 
a roasted chicken, go to the supermarket. They, some of, I mean, they are really, really delicious. Sometimes me and Jimmy go there, we'll pick up a chicken and we'll do chicken salad. So remember, I'm going off an 1830s recipe. So remember, we started off with some butter in the pan. Chicken. And then we waited for the butter to melt. I put about a tablespoon of butter in. Okay. And then the next thing, like I said, I'm going off of a recipe. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our chopped up ham. Just throw this around a little. I think you just want to get it hot. Okay, now we have our cubed ham. If you, I cut it into small little cubes. You want to add the ham. want to do is you want to add your uh, scallions, chopped up scallions. Stir this up a little. And mushrooms? Uh, mushrooms. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our mushrooms. I think. I'm only going to add, you know what, we're going to put them all in. I know Jimmy doesn't like mushrooms, but I left them in big enough pieces where they'll cook down and they won't break up so Jimmy will see them and he can take them out. And then... I don't know why, I, I absolutely love mushrooms, but that's me. I do. And my father always cooked with mushrooms. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get... We have a little bit of fresh, we have basil and we have thyme. We're going to put a little bit of that in. Then we also have parsley and cloves. I chopped up my cloves, about four or five of them. So we're going to put that in. Okay, and we're going to stir this. We're going to keep stirring this until the mushrooms are cooked. The mushrooms will release liquid, so don't worry that there's no liquid on the bottom of this pan. The mushrooms will release their juices. So when we come back, so when we come back, we'll I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, so the mushrooms are are done. They have cooked. I did add. I didn't tell you. You have to add also one bay leaf. And while this is cooking, in the back I have. Uh, probably about four and a half cups of chicken stock uh, with the ziti pasta. So I'm cooking the ziti in the chicken stock. So what I did was I put the pasta in the pot and then I just poured enough stock to cover the pasta. So I'm cooking that now also. Now that the mushrooms are done, we're going to add a little bit of, we're going to add about a half a cup of water. We're going to add salt and pepper. And we're going to add a tablespoon of flour. We're going to give this a stir. Feels good. Yeah, it does. This is probably one of the uh, American colonies. Yeah. Remember, this recipe is from 1830. So remember that when you when we're almost done, you want to make sure you take out that bay leaf. Why? Yeah, I, I was always told never to leave bay leaves in food. So you choke. You could choke on it. My nose was on this. I believe it wasn't true. Okay, so this is going to cook for a while. When we come back, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so this is cooking very nicely so in the meantime what you want to do is take your three eggs okay and we're going to 
going to take out one cup of heavy cream. And we're going to give that a good mix. Good working over. A good working over. Just give this another stir. Another stir. It doesn't burn. And make sure nothing burns. Okay, come back to here. Now watch how he does that. It's very, very good action with that stir. Very good action. Very good action. Okay. You're gonna take your mixture. What are you doing? And we are going to basically pour it over the chicken. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to give this a stir. We're going to cook this. What do you mean? Not yet, Jim. Okay, I hear right. you telling me. I hear you. All right. Not yet. Let me just mix this one at a time. That looks like chicken helper. Chicken helper as opposed to tuna helper and hamburger the helper. helper. This is nowhere like tuna helper. This is authentic well, chicken done. casserole, yeah. 1830 style. This is an authentic recipe. I am not deviating from this recipe at all. Yes, I use the word deviating. Is that a word? Wow. Deviate. Deviating. deviating. Yes, I'm okay. not deviating, deviating yeah. from this recipe. Yeah, that's a word. Okay, so now that the mixture is all incorporated, we want to keep this on low. We want to add one teaspoon, one tablespoon of vinegar. Give it a stir. I know some people may say, my God, that looks like slop. It's not. This is what they ate in the early 19th century. It looks good. It looks, it looks absolutely delicious. And once it's combined with the pasta and the breadcrumb and it's baked in the oven, this is going to be absolutely delicious. So I am going to take out my bay leaf now so I don't forget. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so let this cook for about, actually, for about five minutes, and then we'll shut it off. Okay, so my pasta is almost done, and we're gonna get ready to drain that. I put the chicken mixture I took off the heat. We leave that to the side. Now we're actually gonna put two tablespoons of butter into a frying pan. We're gonna let that melt. Because now we're going to make the sauce that actually goes onto the the pasta. I think it'll be heat. The pasta will be heat. Yeah, I'm going to shut the pasta in the Double. back because that's done. You want to drain the pasta? No, I'm good. I'm going to use my little whisk. Yes. Okay, I want to get that butter melted. Okay, the butter is melted, and what we want to do is add in uh, a third of a cup of flour. I'm going to give this a stir. We want to basically break down the flour taste. <coughs> Take it off the heat if you think it's boiling too much. It's the only thing I hate about working with a gas, I mean, with an electric stove. Which of them get though? Yeah. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. The flour's been cooked down. And we're gonna add in our cup and a half of chicken stock. That's one cup. And that's the half. He keeps reaching behind me. This is what he's reaching behind me for. All these utensils up here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what he's reaching for. All right. So you're gonna give this a stir. I want that all to incorporate. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. I get everything with this. We're going to add parsley and thyme. Uh, thyme. It's about time he had thyme. It's about time. Gonna give this a stir. Let this cook a little. While that's cooking, I'm just going to Definitely drain, drain out drain out my pasta because I don't want it to overcook. Keep the same pot. Okay. Oh, you watching? Over here. Yeah. Come over here. Okay, you want to drain it really good. Really? I would pour it right back into the same pot and I would bring it back to the stove and I would leave it right here because this is where we want it next okay so we're back to this you want to keep stirring so this comes to a slight simmer there we go it's starting to thicken up nicely so now we can shut off the heat there we go okay so that's done so now we have our pasta, now we have our assembly. So this is our pasta, and the first thing we want to do, we can get rid of the, the broth. We don't need that stock, anymore. Stock. stock. Okay, let me get a knife. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of butter, and we're gonna actually throw that in. And also, oh, while that's melting. Place it in, do not throw it. Place it, do it not throw that butter in. our cheeses okay so I have regular Parmesan and I have Gouda no not Gouda uh, oh I forgot what they called it well it's spelled G-Y-R-E-R-E -E, something like that yeah uh, all right, let me Gryer. look it up Gry Gryer? Oh, yeah. yeah something uh, let me look it up and I'll, I'll get back to you but right now I'm gonna make the uh, butter melt and you want to give it a nice stir okay okay so the butter had all melted it's called I did find out it's called Gria cheese it comes from Switzerland it's a uh, it's like our Swiss cheese here that has the holes in it but in Switzerland Gria there's a little town in Switzerland called Gria that's where the cheese is made it's as Americans we like Swiss cheese they love Gria cheese. It's their version of Swiss cheese. It's absolutely delicious. If you've never tried it, try it. It's called Gria cheese. I'm going to be grating a lot of it in. Okay, so the butter is melted throughout the whole pasta. And the next thing we want to do is that little sauce that we made. We want to take that and we want to basically put that all into the pasta. Remember, this is... 19th century recipe. I have not deviated from this recipe. You want to give this some, a stir. You want to mix all of this sauce together. Let me bring this closer to James so you can see. Okay, you just want to mix it. Again, no salt and pepper on here because remember, we're going to be grating so much cheese in here. Okay, the next thing is we're going to start grating. So I'm going to start off with the Parmesan cheese. That's the other grater you like? Yeah, but the other grater, this is just much better. It gives me more of a handle to it, you know. Now, don't be afraid. This needs a lot of cheese. I would recommend buying your cheese this way and doing your grating. Okay, that's the Swiss. 
the Swiss. Right. That's I'm sorry. That's the <laughs> Parmesan. The Parmesan. This is the Gouda. The Gouda. Okay, that's a side piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut that in half because this is the edge and that's the edge and I don't want anything hard. So I'm gonna cut this cheese in half, okay? Oh God, it smells so good. And we're gonna grade this whole piece. The whole piece? Yeah, this whole piece we're gonna grade. Yeah, because I'm gonna show them that it's too dry. No, don't worry about no, it. Man. It's gonna cook in the oven. Remember, this is the recipe, 1830, early 19th century. I'm just gonna stir it first. Yeah, definitely. It, the cheese will absorb all the, the water and it might be too freaking dry. So you can always put some cheese on when you, when you have it, uh, you serve it, right? Yeah, you can always put cheese on it when you serve it, but I think this is gonna call for more cheese. I don't hear it calling. No, but wait, 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 wait. I hear it. Listen, listen. You hear that noise? No, just listen. That means it wants just a oh, tiny. Yeah. I heard it, but it's like it's like in Italian. Yeah. Like no, this is Switzerland. Chipper, chipper. <laughs> okay, a little bit more of this. Oh yeah, a little more, definitely. I'm talking about the whole thing though. No. Okay, so I think that's enough of that one, and just a tiny bit more of the Parmesan. Parmesan. It's a workout, huh? Oh God, yeah. I think we have enough cheese. Oh, I definitely have enough cheese. Again, no salt or pepper to this. What well, is that goodness inside? No, this it's is amazing. a chicken casserole from 1830. This is an authentic recipe. I did not add anything that was not in the original recipe. And I did not omit anything that was in the original recipe. So now we're ready to assemble. When we come back, we're going to assemble this dish before we put it. Oh, of course we're going to assemble it before we put it in the oven. <laughs> we're going to bake it in the oven for a while. But first we're going to assemble it. Okay, so everything is done. What I did was uh, any pan that you feel you can fit it all in. I'm hoping that everything fits in here. I lightly buttered the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off first with, uh, let me just get. Uh, one of these hot plate covers. Okay, so God, this looks so good. My God, the pasta alone looks good. It does. Okay, so we're going to basically, on the bottom, I'm going to put a bit of pasta on the bottom. Maybe I used. I should have used a smaller pan. No, it's fine. You think? Yeah, because you don't get to the point. No, don't worry about it. Come on. I need just a little bit more for the top. Okay. So you want to put one layer of pasta on the bottom. Then you want to take your mixture chicken just give it a mix from the bottom up you want to pour that on top oh you don't mix them together no it's like lasagna it's like a lasagna there you go it's like a lasagna i just realized that And there's no layer a little here and then continue. This is pasta on the bottom. And then all your chicken, chicken goes right on top. Okay, so we have all our chicken on the top. Oh, that tastes so good. Okay, the next thing is you want to bring up your pasta. And you want to put a layer on top. Maybe I should have used a, no, just put a it smaller pan. No, it's fine. Just put it out. Okay. And I didn't think I was going to have enough, you know? Yeah. I always feel that way. Of course. 
you don't want to run out when someone goes over and eat something. Oh my God, I got them all up. And you just walk at the time, people look at you and say, that's the guy has them left. They didn't end up left. And you start laughing at you and making fun of you. Well, you if you have a smaller pan than what I did, I would recommend using the smaller pan because that is that's... perfect. That is perfect. What are you kidding me? You got a chance to breathe on top. There you go. Okay. Okay, so we're done with this. The next thing we want to do is we want to take our breadcrumb. Again, you don't have to use panko. You can use any breadcrumb that you like. You can use plain breadcrumb. You can use seasoned breadcrumb. You can use homemade breadcrumb. I'm using panko because I like the crust that it gives you on top. So I'm just going to take a whole bunch of... Even though we don't like to use seasoned breadcrumb, remember? Yeah, I don't like using seasoned yeah. breadcrumb because who knows how long the cheese has been sitting in there, yeah. you know. I'd rather get always... If you're going to buy breadcrumb in the store, buy plain. Because I'd rather you grade your own cheese in the breadcrumb. And I'd rather you put your own fresh parsley. Because the stuff that's in the, uh, the ones that you buy that are seasoned, they're not good. Okay. Like I said, don't be afraid with the breadcrumb. Okay. Now we're going to just take a little bit of melted butter. I'm just going to drizzle it ever so often on top. What's the purpose of that? It's going to help with the breadcrumb. It's going to give it a little bit of crustiness. Oh, well, they'll, they'll walk hand in hand together in the oven. Mm -hmm. They'll walk hand in hand they'll in the oven. They'll walk hand in hand in the oven. In the oven. A marriage made in heaven. There you go. Now, I know this almost looks like it's a lot for this particular, for just regular chicken casserole. For regular chicken casserole. That's, that is an 1830s chicken casserole from the early 19th century. We've modernized chicken casserole so much that you could basically make chicken casserole any way you like, as long as they're chicken, there's chicken inside. This particular recipe happens to be an authentic recipe from Eight, from the year 1830. Uh, I did look it up and uh, I did not deviate from the recipe. Everything that I used was what they used back in the 1830s. And uh, the only thing different is I'm using modern tools. I'm putting it in a modern pan. I'm using my stove. I used a regular frying pan. I used a whisk. That's the only difference. Everything else is exactly the way they would have made this in 1830, early 19th century. So we're gonna put this in the oven. I got the oven heated at 375. We're gonna cook it for about a half hour to 45 minutes. When we take it out, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so my uh, chicken casserole has been cooking in the oven for about 45 minutes. We're gonna actually take it out. I actually cooked it halfway with the cover on and halfway with the cover off. So we're gonna, I shut the oven off. That's up to your taste though. And look how beautiful that looks. Jim, come get a shot. Mm. Look That's how nice. beautiful that is. Nice mm. and crispy. Got some beautiful crispy mm. chunks here. We're not gonna cut into this until it kind of cools down just a little, and then we're gonna dig right into it. At least so 20 minutes, right? I would wait at least about uh, 20 hour? to 25 minutes, because this is actually piping hot. Yeah. So we're just gonna wait a little while. So <clears throat> remember, People make chicken casserole all the time. It's uh, a very easy dish to make. Uh, the modern way, you could do anything you like with a chicken casserole, as long as you have chicken. This is an 1830s authentic recipe. Nothing has been added that was not in the original recipe. Nothing has been removed that was not in the original recipe. The only difference between the way I made it and the way they made it back in 1830 is the way they made it as far as with implements. They cooked this in a fireplace, cast iron in pots and frying pans, and I used modern day conveniences. I used my oven, I used a whisk, I used a pot, I used a pan. So that's the only difference. Okay, so we're gonna cut into it now. Actually, we're just gonna spoon into it now. So I'm just gonna take a piece. Oh my God, I can hear that crunch. Okay, on. If you guys can hear the crunch in the video, please let us know. I'm actually gonna use, uh, this right here, I think it's better. Oh. Let's 
looks absolutely delicious. Okay, so that's that. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna taste it for you, like I always do. Give it a shot. Oh, I didn't take a photo, that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna give it a taste with the pasta. I'll be careful. Right now. Okay, so let's give it a taste. Right. Swallow. I can't tell you how I wish you guys can taste this. Well, I hope you guys make this. This is absolutely delicious. Very, very good. It's so delicious. I can taste all the cheese, the ham. Uh, try this recipe. Like I said, it is an authentic uh, 19th century dish from 1830. Uh, I will be making... Uh, making i am making a video of what i'm doing but the uh ingredients will be in the description below uh so yeah try this absolutely delicious like i say at the end of all my videos take care of one another peace out